Hi, this is a photograph I took in Karnak, Brittany, some years ago. It consists of a farm building and some trees and a, a little grassy foreground. I shall lower the horizon and make it more of a sky picture than, than a foreground picture. The, the, the stones in the front are part of, the, of a massive megalithic development uh, well, thousands of years ago and it's very famous. I'll pin that up there. I'm, another demonstration of big brush watercolour. Uh, my, my brush mainly is the hake, the two inch hake, Ron Ranson hake. A wonderful brush when you get used to it. I've got a pot of water in my tray here. I haven't got a camera, a separate camera, just this webcam, which I can't move about. But I'll use a, a rigger for any fine, fine detail. Got a smaller sable that I use for figures and an inch flat for removing paint or doing roof lines and I have a smaller one as well. Here's my palette. Looks a bit ropey but but it does. There's lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber and Payne's grey. A lot of simple colours and when you get used to them, you can you can you can mix most colours with with them. If you use too many colours, and then there are hundreds made, hundreds of tubes and all sorts of things, it's very confusing. It's better to keep things simple, especially if you're you're not an experienced artist. But anyway, the paper is one hundred and thirty pound Fabriano, and coat that with water first. Good, good soaking. Not so that it's running down the, the page so much, but or off off of the board. But this it will expand the paper uniformly, so that periodically we can reclip it and keep the paper as flat as possible. It does work. I've done no preliminary drawing on the paper. I'm just going to go straight in with the paint now. While the brush is wet, I'll just get some raw sienna and just soak that in and then while that's uh, spreading across the page or down the page I'll, I'll add, a, ha, add a cloudy feel to it with uh, alizarin crimson and Payne's grey because I, it was a cloudy day when I took it and it gives a bit of drama I think so here we are, there's just clouds getting smaller towards the horizon. A bit heavier on the top I think. Right, the paper started to spread out already. I'll just reclip it. Whoops. Because the the water accumulates at the bottom of the page, I just clean it off. Otherwise, it will spread up into a cauliflower. Right, okay. Now on the photograph, I'm going to I'm going to add some some distance behind the farmhouse and across the horizon line. And for that, I'll use I'll use the 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 grey and some ultramarine and a bit of bit of raw sienna and just if I put the horizon there I'll just touch there's gonna be a lot of grass under this it's probably high, a bit higher than I, I was going to but the the house is going to go in somewhere here so I won't paint behind that and there's going to be this heavy grass heavy green tree like a, a large scotch or french scotch pine and, uh, so just and there were some very heavy ones over here so for that i'm going to use lemon yellow and the Payne's gray probably a bit of alizarin crimson as well but it's quite quite dark it's quite a the sun was well there wasn't any sun but the light was coming from the back of the picture so throwing these 
these trees into contrast. Okay. Bits of shadow area there, there as well. Bits of brushy, brush, brush, brush shrubby gorse. And the foreground was quite light across here. But that's okay, let's just darken it a little bit more. Okay. And over here we've got the farm building there and there are these trees. I'm just using the corner of the branch to do this. And I want the trees to look a little bit spiky. No, I'll do that side. Right. And here we have a sort of well it looks like a big pine tree. I suppose there's got a lot of pines in this part of France. through there and another spike. I'll vary this a little bit. Well, a bit dark for some more neat yellows in. Warm it up as it comes forward. Whoops. Ooh, got some neat paint on there. Never mind, doesn't matter. I think I could afford to go in a bit darker with, the, with those. Okay, let that go for a minute. Just, now over here, with my finger now, I'm just going to put some trunks in and branches, not too many, just to add a little bit of interest in, in there. That'll do. If I want to go a bit uh, stronger with those I can do that when it's dry or when it's dried off a bit. So I'm not even going to think about the house yet. I'm going to texture this foreground and using a fairly dry hake raw sienna could have created an illusion of of grass so just just dabs some darks some warm darks if you want to warm colours up, add a bit of light red or burnt umber to try to show the shadows. There'll be quite a bit of shadow under here. Right, let's get some more golden sort of colour if I can now, using uh, the raw sienna. Raw sienna, a bit of burnt umber just to warm it all up. I'm leaving some bits of white just to add a bit of interest. In the foreground, which will be the darkest area, I'm using ultramarine, light red, a bit of lemon yellow. And I can etch into this with my fingernail. To show some grass, let's just reclip this. We'll see how it grows. Our stretches. When we're doing this with a lot of water on the paper, it keeps it nice and nice and flat.
Right, well, that's weird. Just... I'm not going to paint the men here things in. Well, I might do. But to do that, I'd have to paint this area here a bit darker, then, then scrape out the, the, the stones, the standing stones, with a, with a plastic card. So here I'm going to put some bit of shadow in there using the uh, the ultramarine and light, light red just under there. I don't want to uh, paint every piece of grass. We've got to find a way of, of just just showing, just showing it with your finger. Now, finger nose, it's, it's a nice little trick, but it's very easy to overdo it. Uh, right, okay. Uh, well, we let that go. Now the <coughs> now the the house is very it's a very simple house the shape so i'm just going to indicate the the the, the flank wall end under the under the roof uh, about there about there bit of a chimney there and then that comes down there, and then the roof got a couple of gables on it. Right. Right. Okay. Now it's just uh, with a very light colour, probably. Just a little bit of weak raw sienna mixed with palette grey down there. And then at the side we can do that dark because that's in shadow so I'll just use a bit of, bit of grey there. Nothing too elaborate. I'll just dry that off a little bit, and I can put a bit of texture in the in the wall. Right, just a little bit of bit of colour. On. I put some paint on the palette last night, but it hasn't dried. Right, just a uh, um, down here. Right, let's try and straighten up the chimney. Right, it's only an impression. Can't do much more than that, really. Uh, right, I'll, I'll strengthen the the trees now. These ones here are a bit more dark because they, they were very, very dark in silhouette. But photographs always seem to play havoc with contrast. The darks are never quite as dark as they look on the photograph, especially on a nice day. Well, on a, a bright but cloudy day. bit of shadowy stuff, foliage, anything really. Just 
Right, just this texture in there. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Reflex. Right, okay, I'm going to uh, clean my brush and with the rigger. <coughs> rigger. And some, some dark, dark green. Just there's quite a bit of water on, on the rigger. The rigger it doesn't hold a lot of water and it soon, soon dries. Some, some grass here, here and there. Right, I'll just try if I can put some warm grasses in there. And then, uh, use the raw sienna and a bit of burnt umber. best picture but for a demonstration just to show a simple sky on a bright but cloudy French morning. We were walking to a lovely French market on that day and it was lovely with all the lovely grub for free. Doesn't do to have too much uh, breakfast on a market day. Lovely place. A couple of birds. Flying in to say hello. Right, I'll, I'll quickly put that in, in a mount to see what it looks like. Right there. I'll go away. Here. I'm just holding the mount up. I'll show you an oil painting because I did of it so some years ago. I did it as a demonstration for a friend. There was a reason I went back to watercolour just before Christmas so that I could give her some some help. Right, let's see. That's the picture in a in a frame. Let's just straighten it up a little bit. And I'll show you the the oil painting that I did of it. You can see that. Oops. There. Okay. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.